All right, so I was on YouTube earlier today and I came across this user under the name of BlenderHub2463 and um, they have some pretty cool stuff on their page. But one thing that stuck out to me was this uh, Blender geometry node setup that seems to simulate a sort of fluid-like sim inside of an orb and I thought it was pretty cool. So I recreated the effect and then I added in a few things just to refine it and push it a little more. So let's get right to it. Let's go ahead and open up Blender and jump right into our geometry nodes tab. Go ahead and create a new node. Once we have that set up, we're going to go ahead and add in a volume cube. Once we have our volume cube in there, go ahead and add in a volume to mesh node. And once we have that, let's add in a set shade smooth node just to make everything all nice and shiny and smooth. Once we have that, we're going to hop over to the other side of the node tree and add in a mix node. Once we have our mix node in here, we're going to go ahead and change that to color and plug in our mix node into the density of our volume cube. Once we have this, let's go ahead and add in a gradient texture node and plug in the color of the gradient texture into the factor of your mix node. And then we're going to go ahead and add in a noise texture node followed by a color ramp node. We're going to plug in our color ramp to the B slot of the mix node. And while we're here, let's go ahead and change the A slot to black. And we're going to plug in our noise texture to the factor of the color ramp node. And as you can see up top here, we're already getting some interesting things happening. Our effect is starting to take shape. When I move the sliders of the color ramp, it affects the noise texture and therefore affects the geometry. So let's go ahead and change our a gradient texture node to spherical. All right, so we're going to go ahead and add in the scene time node. The scene time node basically moves along an attribute based off of your timeline. So if you plug in the seconds value, it'll move the attribute along based off of how many seconds you have in your animation. If you set it to frame, then it'll move it along based off of your frames. Um, so we're going to go ahead and set our noise texture to 4D to get this extra value up here. And we're going to plug this scene time node in. However, if you want to have more control over how fast or slow your fluid like motion is going, I recommend you don't use this scene time node and just animate the W value on your own. That way you can set the pace as to how fast or how slow you want the overall effect to move. And as you can see, we're already achieving this fluid like effect which I think is pretty cool. There's a lot of potential here to tweak this and really make this your own and add just so much more to it. I'm going to go ahead and add in a set material node so that we can add materials to our node setup. Add a little bit of color. I'm going to go ahead and bring in a material that I was working on earlier today. And then we're going to set this up for render. I'm going to change our render engine from EV to cycles. I got GPU as our device. And then I'm going to add in a few lights. Aerial light will do. And then once I have this light set up here, I'm going to go ahead and add in a track to constraint to the light. That way my uh, light follows the object in the scene and I don't have to tweak it as much when I have to move lights around. Go ahead and duplicate this light. Now I'm going to add a ground plane. So I'm going to use a circular mesh for this. Go ahead and scale that out. Hit tab for edit mode. F to fill it. And now we have our ground plane. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the ground plane to create our wall just so that we have a little bit of bounce lighting going on in the scene. And we're pretty much almost there. 
what I did add to this overall node tree, you can add more uh, modifiers to the overall effect. So here I'm adding a simple deform modifier and I'm leaving the twist option on and I'm setting the angle to 180. And as you can see, we start getting these nice little striations and these peaks and these valleys in the overall effect. And it totally changes the look of it. And it, it just, it adds another level of detail and another level of refinement to the effect. You can go ahead and stack these as much as you want. You can add in a displacement modifier if you want and see how that looks. Again, it's total creative freedom here. It's up to you to make this your own. So that's gonna wrap this up. Hopefully you learned something new. If you like this video, go ahead and leave a like. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave those down below. And as always, on to the next one.